Well, gentlemen, check your sard arms. In one minute, we'll be the first men to set foot on Mars. Quite an honor. As long as the medals aren't awarded posthumously. Still uneasy, Dr. Horst. Captain Black, I've been uneasy ever since I can remember on Earth and on Mars. Well, 30 seconds. Give me the intercom phone, Lustig. Y y yes, sir. Masters? Ah, uh, sir. Battle stations are to be manned until we return. If you're not back in two hours, I want no rescue party sent out. Blast off and save the ship. You understand? Ah, uh, sir. All right. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Lustig, open the outer airlock. Aye, sir. It's fresh air. Let's go. All right now. Take it easy. It's too dark to move fast. Quiet, isn't it? Not even a wind. Can't see anything through this ground mist. Quiet. You don't know what's out here. All right. Come on. <laughs> what the? Quiet. Captain, I could swear that sounds like a, a, a rooster. I don't hear it anymore. Very homey, but unlikely sound. A, a rooster crowing on Mars? Kingston. Hi, hi, sir. Set that machine gun 25 yards to the flank. We'll stay here until the ground mist lifts. Aye, sir. What do you make of the ground, Horst? Grass. Plain grass. You can see some large foliage there where the mist thinned down. Kingston, hold your fire, you fool! I hit it, Captain! What? Some kind of wild animal. I hit it. I can see the traces, but it's still standing. Come on, Horst. Doctor, where are you? Up ahead. Admiring the wild animal. Careful, Horst. Wait, wait for us! Don't worry, Captain. It's an iron deer, a lawn ornament. Well, that's, that's impossible. It's hollow. Interesting, isn't it? A whitewashed Victorian iron deer sitting on a lawn in the middle of Mars. I don't understand. Look around. The mist is lifting. Hey, Captain, look there. It's a house. A regular old-fashioned house. But, sir, on Mars? Good Lord, I haven't seen carved scrolls and gingerbread like that in years. Look at this porch swing. The geraniums. <laughs> There. I told you it was a rooster, Captain. Give me the glasses, Lustig. I want to take a look at that front window. Well, there's an upright piano. Some sheet music on it. Lustig, it's beautiful Ohio. Horse, do you think that civilizations of two planets could be identical? I don't know. That specific style of geraniums is only 50 years old on Earth. Is it logical that we should develop in Mars? How about that porch swing? And that piano? And beautiful Ohio? Why... It's impossible. Captain Black, this looks like the town I was born in. Well, it looks like my hometown, too. I thought of something, sir. It's the only solution. Maybe we're not the first ship to reach Mars from Earth. Don't be ridiculous, Lustig. Well, how else can you explain it? Suppose some scientists got together. They invented some spaceship and planted a colony here. That's the only answer. That's impossible, Lustig. Men's space travel, it couldn't be a secret. Do you have any idea what ships cost? What industrialized power is needed? No, there's got to be some logical reason. I think perhaps you may find out, Captain. A light went on in the house. Kingston, cover that door with the machine gun. Aye, sir. Come on, horse. We're going to ring that doorbell. There's got to be some scientific answer to all of this. There's something moving in there. Stand back, horse. Give me a clear shot. Are you sure a bullet can stop a Martian? Steady now. I, well, we... If you're selling anything, it's much too early. No, 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 just wait a minute. What town is this? What do you mean? Are you a census taker? No, no, we're strangers here. We want to know how this town got here. We're from Earth. From where? From Earth. Do you mean out of the ground? Are you sure you're feeling well? Madam, we came in a flying ship across space. We're from the third planet, Earth. This is Mars. Do you understand? Mars! You go away now. You hear? Oh, call my husband from upstairs and he'll chase you. Go, now. But this is Mars, isn't it? This is Green Lake, Wisconsin in the United States of America, founded on the east of the Atlantic and on the west up by the Pacific. Now you go away. Goodbye. Horse, do you suppose it's really possible? I gotta find out more about this. I 
I told you I'll call my husband. Now you go away. You gotta tell me one thing first. What year is this? Year 2137, of course. For goodness sake. You hear that, horse? We know it's 2035, and we know this is Mars. Horse, is it possible we got fouled up, made some tremendous blunder, and circled around and landed back on Earth? In 2035? Well, maybe some switch in time or dimension. Could we have shifted somehow? Gone backward in time? Oh, Hurst, this is not going to hold water. It's not logical. We've checked every mile. We went past the moon out into space. We're, we're on Mars. Lustig, out at point. Kingston, in the rear. Keep that gun at half load. Aye, sir. Horse has got to be some cold, logical solution. Captain. What? That house down the street. The white one with the green shutters. Lustig, what's the matter? I never thought it. I never thought it. Oh, thank God. Lustig, Lustig, come back here. He's running for that house. That crazy fool after him, quick. Lustig, stop. Come down off that porch now. Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandma. Lustig, what the devil are you doing? <gasps> Albert. Grandma, Grandpa, is it you? Albert, it's been so many years. How you've grown, boy. It's so good to see you. Lieutenant Lustig. Uh, Captain Grandma, I want you to meet my friends. Uh, this is Captain Black. Captain, I want you to meet my grand folks. Howdy. Any friend of Albert's is a friend of ours. How long have you been here, Grandma? Oh, a good many years. Ever since we died. Ever since you what? Yes, sir. They, they've been dead for 30 years. What? Oh, now don't you trouble yourself. It's all right. We're alive again. That's all. You mean to tell me Mars is heaven? Oh, nonsense, no. All we know is, here we're alive again. And who are we to question God's infinite ways? Lustig, we're going back to the ship. But Captain, uh, I want to talk to my grand folks. Lieutenant Lustig, I don't like any part of this. You'll come back with us if we have to club you and carry you. Uh, aye, sir. Now, let's go. Heaven only knows what they're up against back at the ship. Horse, look at that crowd around the ship. It looks like we're being welcomed with a celebration, Captain. Celebration? They've abandoned ship. Every port is open. No guard set. You, you, masters. Uh, hi, hi, Captain. Uh, me, my old dad. Uh, dad. Oh, uh, th that's Captain Black. He's not a bad guy for an officer. Kingston. What, sir? Bring that band of soldiers back. Use force if you have to. Aye, aye. Oh, excuse me, sir. That's my Uncle George. Kingston. I'll be right back, Captain. Uncle George! Uncle George! What the devil is going on here? Don't you understand, sir? They've all found friends and relatives. They're all here. You're right, Captain. I've found them, and the whole crew is out in the crowd. Well, I gave orders. Definite orders. You don't understand, Captain. I understand mutiny. I don't care how many relatives show up. I will have discipline. Johnny. Johnny, you old son of a gun. It's you, Edward. Yeah, man. It can't be. Oh, of course it is. Ed, Ed, Dr. Horse. This is my brother, Edward. Hello, sir. It's wonderful to see you, Edward. Look, I've got to get back to my ship. Johnny, you Johnny, wait. I, I almost forgot Mom's waiting at home. Mom? Yeah, and Dad, too. Mom and Dad are alive? Oh, then you're real, Ed. Well, of course. Don't I feel real? <laughs> How's that, huh? Why, Ed, Ed? We've got lunch for you, Johnny. Mom's making rigatoni. Dr. Horse, haven't you found anybody? Oh, no, Captain. I have nobody. Well, uh, sure, sure. Horse, horse, you wouldn't believe it. It's been 30 years since I had Mom's rigatoni. Ah, fabuloso. 35 years, bravo. Oh, mi bambino Gianni sta in mi casa. Oh, oh mi, mi caron, mi caron. Plenty more in the kitchen, Gianni. So don't hold it back. You too, Dr. Horst. Mangia, mangia, per favore, mangia. Well, Johnny, you're still in the Navy, huh? That's right, Dad. I'm in command of a ship. Well, we're a whole Navy family, Dr. Horst. All three of our boys in the service. Ed was the best pilot in the Pacifics till... What did happen, Ed? What's the difference? I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, but, uh... You know, 
It's almost perfecto. All we're missing is your brother, Will. Then the whole family could be together. <laughs> it's not going to be long, Mom. Will's in charge of the XR-54, the next rocket coming to Mars. Well, little Will, when does he leave, Johnny? Well, the takeoff's scheduled for September. Uh-huh. Uh, but it depends on what we report. Well, <laughs> there's no question about that now. <laughs> <laughs> this calls for a celebration. How about a little of the old dandelion wine? Hey, Johnny? Papa, now don't you go giving Johnny too much wine. He's a big boy now, Mother. Dr. Horst, what are you doing sitting over here all alone? What do you think of my little uh, familia? Very nice. Grazie, grazie. I can't understand why you didn't find any folks here, Dr. Horst. It's just, it's such a shame. Everybody else is so happy. Well, I never remembered my family, Mrs. Black. All I know is they were gassed at Dachau during the Second World War. When I was liberated, I was in delirium for three months. I cannot even remember anything before that. A psychiatric phenomenon... Oh, me, mamma mia, say terrible. Isn't there anything anybody can do for you? I don't want to remember. I haven't had a pleasant life. I prefer to be free of emotional entanglements. They interfere with a scientific approach. Mia dispiage, Dr. Horst. Che cosa? Oh, I'll get it, I'll get it. Well, um, maybe we better call it a night. You must be getting tired, Johnny. I'd better be going back to the ship. You understand us. You stay the night. We insist. I just couldn't rest thinking of you all alone on that ship. I'll be all right. Well, good night. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Dr. Horse. That phone message, it was for you. Me? Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, a message from, uh, in Anna? Anna? I, I don't... She must be an old friend. Isn't that nice? Que simpatico. I don't... Uh, are you sure it's for me? I don't remember any Anna. Well, she asked if you were better. I think she's someone you knew at Dhaka. Anna? She said she's coming over here first thing in the morning, so you, you gotta stay over, Horst. <laughs> yes, but... Well, that settles it. You stay here, Horst. You can bunk with me in my old room. Yeah, but Johnny, we thought you'd like to be with Edward. So you could talk with Edward the way you used to, Johnny. Well, we can't put Dr. Horse in the daybed. I think we better share the room tonight. Be plenty of time for talking, Ed. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I suppose I better drop by the ship. <laughs> you know, Ed. Security check? Meh, why do you have to do that here? <sighs> I, I don't know, Mom, but there's no good reason, I guess. I suppose we skip it tonight. Well... Good night, everybody. Oh, it's so good to have you home, Johnny. It's good to be home, Mom. Captain Black, you asleep? No. Been thinking about what we're expecting. Green skinned Martians would. All the time it was only Mom and Dad and Edward waiting. It's funny what tricks your imagination can play on you. Well, I guess Mars is heaven, Horst. You know, I've been thinking about Martians too, Captain. Just suppose there were Martians, and they saw us land, and suppose they thought of us as invaders. What would be the best weapon they could use against our atom bombs, huh? I don't see what you're getting at. They would want to disarm us first to wipe out all suspicion and make us feel at home. Suppose this house isn't even real. Suppose the people are just images stolen from our own memories by Martians, created for us by telepathy, <laughs> hypnotism. <laughs> that's the craziest theory I've ever heard. Maybe that's why there was no one for me. Because all my life, there's no happy memory, no real loved person, not even my mother. I don't remember her. Only the piles of rotten corpses at Dachau. There was no happy emotion for these people to recreate. How about that phone call, Anna? Yes, Anna. I didn't remember who she was. 
but I do now. I just remembered. When I was freed from Dachau, sick, delirious, I raved about a wonderful, kind nurse named Anna who took care of me. Well, there you are. It's logical. She's coming to see you tomorrow. But there was no Anna. I'd been nursed by a man. What? Anna was only a dream. And there was only one way they could have learned about her. By reading my subconscious mind. Oh, that's impossible, Horst. Why? A whole crew was thinking of home. Suppose the Martians read our minds. Yes, um, but if they are Martians... Well, if there are, they have us separated. Each man in a different house, sleeping, trusting, no one at the gun. Oh, no. I, I left my pistol downstairs. Do you, there, do you actually think there's something to this, Horst? It's a perfect trap, Captain. Who would suspect his own mother, his grandparents? How easy. Just a knife in the heart of each sleeping man. That's impossible, Horse. But you know what? We've, we've got to get back to the ship. Listen. The crickets have stopped. Come on. We don't know when they change back to whatever they want. Where are you going, John? Ed, we, uh... I just wanted to get a drink of water. Um, that's all, Ed. You're not thirsty, John. You don't want to drink. Look out! You don't want to drink. His face! It's changing! He's a Martian! Run, horse, run! You can't get away, John. This way, horse! Horse, where are you? I gotta get back to the ship. I gotta get back to the ship. Which way is it? There it is. I'm almost there. I just gotta get to the airlock. Up these stairs and get to the radio. Hello, hello! Can you hear me, Earth? This is Captain John Black, the XR-53 calling from Mars. I've locked myself in the ship, but they've crippled it. I can't take off or fire the guns. They're coming for me now! The Martians! I'm all alone here. The rest are dead. Kingston, Lustig, Dr. Horse. Poor Horse, he didn't even make it to the door. Listen, listen, they're trying to break through the hall. Edward and Mom and Dad and all the folks, but they're changing now. They're melting and changing back into their Martians. Can you understand? They're Martians, not men. They made us think that Mars was heaven and we fell into the trap. Can you hear me, Earth? You've got to stop the next rocket. Listen, tell my brother Will, tell my brother not to come. They'll trap him too. They'll kill them all. Hello, hello. Can you hear me, Earth? This is John Black on Mars. Hello, Earth. This is John Black on Mars. Hello, Earth. Hello, Earth. Hello, Earth. Tonight, X-1 has brought you the science fiction classic Mars is Heaven, written by Ray Bradbury and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy and Julio Flores. X-1.